I go all around the tree so I get good coverage of all surfaces. Well, Bicky approves of the apple spraying. She's busy licking the milk off the trunk and the ground. Aren't you, Bicky? <laughs> Do you think this is a good garden job? This is Pink Lady. This is the tree where the problem started in the first place. It has had issues with mildew for a number of years now, uh, at least five and it spread it to its next neighbour, the Brayburn. But then last year we just had the grey mildew go through the, the apple grove quite significantly. Because I am time poor, I did what I often do, and that is nothing, which in this case was a mistake, because as I said, the powdery mildew did end up going into the Brayburn and then last year, with the second La Nina in a row, off it went through the orchard. So this tree has been opened up significantly. You'll see it's very open in the middle in an effort to reduce the problems, which always start at the terminal ends. Lady in the Snow, which split last year and we lost the whole crop that's coming on lots of new growth it won't fruit this year or I won't allow it to even if there are a couple of flowers which there could be it's still in recovery mode but it will get sprayed anyway along with every every other apple tree in the orchard of all the trees Brayburn is showing the most signs of an issue with mildew or a potential issue so this is the one that I will be focusing on very, very closely, this and Pink Lady. A cane is still opening its blossom, as is Gala. Granny Smith is well covered. Beauty of Bath is fairly well covered. This is one of my earliest maturing varieties. Vista Bella, another early maturing variety, is also well covered. Brayburn is a late maturing variety, yet it flowered very early. And it is full of blossom this year. The last two years have been more or less rest years for it. I did identify a few growth tips where the powdery mildew was already evident. Uh, the mildew is persistent in this tree. I didn't cut them off, but I will get my act together and do that today. There are a few tips of powdery mildew new growth that I will cut off. But overall, the tree's looking quite good. We've just had a significant rain event in Tasmania. We had 179 mil of rain here in about 30 hours. Uh, which I thought was impressive, but Great Lake up in the Highlands had 398. The following day we had 9 mil, and then the following day, which was yesterday, only 1.5. Today it's supposed to be sunny, so this is a good day to spray the trees again. This is Crofton, a mid-season maturing variety. It's doing pretty well as well. These and the canes are my favourite apples. This is Lala Laylor. The variety itself is Laylor, but it comes from the Lala region, north of Launceston, hence that name. It hasn't given us a lot of fruit as yet, and it's on par to do the same thing this year. But it looks healthy. And that's my main concern. So, time to get spraying.
I heard on the radio the other day that the La Nina weather pattern is waning. We didn't have any rain at all for the first two weeks of December. In the third week of December, we have had 20 mil. So that's not too bad. After three applications of milk spray over the course of a couple of months, how have the trees fared as far as mould slash mildew has gone? This tree here is Pink Lady. It's fared not terribly well. The powdery mildew has been quite evident. Having said that, the new growth that has come on in these drier few weeks looks quite normal. The fruit is sparse and not healthy looking. So was the milk helpful for this tree? I would say not particularly, in fact not at all. The tree adjacent to Pink Lady is Brayburn and it's in just as bad a shape. In fact, if anything, I'd say it's a little worse. This tree is Vistabella and it's also quite significantly affected. Whilst it has a decent amount of fruit, this is what the fruit looks like. It's splitting and this is what it did last year as well. This is what I was trying to avoid. These three trees are on the highest slope, which is a western angle. This one is the north. That's the way our wind blows, north through to south. But the mildew actually travelled south to north, so I don't know if there's any significance. I can't see any immediate connection. This tree is Granny Smith. Last year it was quite badly affected and we opened this tree up quite a lot to improve the airflow. It is a little affected this year but nowhere near as bad as last year. But it still does have some cracking and mildew on the fruit. In fact the more I look around I would say a good half of the fruit which doesn't sound great. But last year we lost at least three quarters of the fruit. When I say lost, I will come around and cut these off and bin them. This is Cox's Orange Pippin. It's having a rest year this year, so it's not actually producing any fruit. There is a little bit of powdery mildew. The new growth since the dry spell looks healthy. Because it's having a rest year fruit wise, it will put out more green growth in response to that. This is Gala, another mixed bag. There is some affected fruit, but overall the leaves look relatively healthy. Where there are some apples with just one or two spots on, we will leave those to mature. Anything that's badly affected will come off. Last year we had to take off probably three quarters of the fruit from this tree as well. We, and it hadn't fruited that well, it was having a bit of a rest year. So we basically got no fruit from this tree last year. So at least we'll get some this year. This is a cane, one of my earlier fruiting varieties. And so far it has seemed to have escaped the mildew. Having said that, there is a little bit of evidence but this late in the season I don't think it's going to get any worse and the fruit is looking pretty good. Which is great because a cane is in my top two of apple varieties. Beauty of Bath is looking pretty good as well. So we've come down the hill a bit, a bit more protection. You can see up in the background where that orange uh, frame is which was the end of a bed we use that to support the branches um, that's the Brayburn which is badly affected then straight down from that is Cox's orange and then down here so at this level 
lower down the hill it's looking pretty good there is a bit of damaged fruit there but that could easily be from a parrot the green rosellas they come in here and haunt my orchard when they think the fruit's ready for picking we've got cherries coming on soon so they're seen around the place quite a lot this is my poor old Duke of Clarence it's badly affected it was last year fruit wise it leaves not as much although they don't, they don't look that great and yet it is the lowest so it can't all be to do with location because higher to this on the upper slope are the Beauty of Bath, a cane which are largely unaffected and yet this one is as bad as any of the ones up higher. So there has to be some relationship between the variety and the susceptibility to the fungus. Directly below the pink lady tree is Crofton, my other favourite. It has some effect. It wasn't too badly affected last year this year slightly worse I would say. This is Lady in the Snow. It has lots of new growth and looks pretty much unaffected by the mildew and yet right behind it is Pink Lady. Last but not least is Laylor. I had planted out all my apple trees and then my son grafted this one at school and anyone who grafted a tree was sent home with one so I couldn't not plant it out so it's planted a bit separate from all the others you can see the others there continuing down the hill there are all the apple trees it's south which means it has the prevailing wind pass through the affected apple trees to this one there is a little bit of mildew in some of the fruit. It won't take much to thin these out. But then there aren't a lot of fruit and it hasn't been a great fruiter to date. The fruit are very nice though. So they're worth having when they do arrive. I think the weather is settling down enough now to say that it's not going to be a big issue, at least I hope so. It's always a bit of a risk trying to second guess the weather. But I did hear, as I said, that the La Nina weather system seems to be weakening, so here's hoping. Would I say the milk was successful as a deterrent for mildew? Uh, that would be a no. I have since heard that uh, bicarb soda spray could be good or methylated spirit but by the time I heard this I was already on the milk path I wanted to try one thing see how it went so I won't be trying milk again if we have a recurring problem next year which we will with Pink Lady and Braeburn and probably with uh, Vista Bella by the look of it then I will certainly try one of those other things next year because I'm really keen to keep away from chemicals like the natural approach best whenever I can. So that's my apples and mildew. One always has to have a dog in the orchard with them. That's you isn't it Bicky? You like being out with me don't you Bic? Are you a good dog? Yeah. Are you a good dog? Wag your tail if you're a good girl. Oh she's not wagging your tail. Yeah that works. <laughs>